Hey everyone, welcome to What Chip Painter. In this video, we're going to be talking about our favorite top 10 miniatures from 2018. That's myself. And Austin's going to be joining me. Hey guys. There he is. There he is. Apologies for the random stuff in the background. It's just uh, my office is a massive mess. I'm not used to being on camera. You don't often see my face. You don't. Have, well, you've seen Austin more than you've seen myself. I just wanted to give you something to look at in the corner while we're running through these things. Now, we're just going to go through what we thought was our favorite miniatures, basically, what we've painted on the channel and why we've picked them as our top 10. So hopefully that's some enjoyable content for you all to see. Let us know in the comments below if this video is the sort of you know, one-off interesting thing you would like to see pop up in the channel, maybe once a year, maybe we'll just do one every year. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see that. Anyway, let's get started. Number 10. So I gotta say to start off the list, I think Titus for me is a pretty fa fantastic paint job just for the simple fact of the free-handed painted lines on his bathing suit. And I want to say also the crazy look that I gave him with his eyes and his mustache. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like the base when you did that circus base with the custom template circle thing you did. If I'm ever painting a circus miniature, I'm going to be on that. Anyway, my number 10 is going to have to be Carthage. don't know if you remember that one. That's the one where I did the batch painting five models, the whole game, in fact. Oh, yeah, I remember right that. Here. The whole game in in two hours, complete, completely finished. Showed you how I would go about batch painting and also five different skin tones. You know, for the fact that you did it in two hours and there was no mold lines, I was really impressed. Thank you very much. Number nine. So for this one, I decided on Fezzik the Giant, uh, Andre the Giant from Princess Bride. I uh, painted this. This came in in one of my model box subscriptions, and it was the first time I went around about painting that autumn base, that that forest uh, fall base, you say, in America. I uh, really, really enjoyed that. It was my first time painting a metal miniature, and I think overall it came out really well. It was really subtly highlighted and shaded, so that's my number nine. That's one of my favorites, man. I really thought you did the base pretty amazingly. It it came out so well and looked so lifelike for me. Now, for mine, it's the Thorn Spawn Prime. The fact that you got that lighting effect and how blue it came out and it was affecting all the wood on the outside and it was the first time you really ever did that, I was super impressed with that. Only number nine, though, that is going to be on my list, and I, I rated it a lot higher than ninth, Austin. Well, so, you know, there are better things on the list than that one. You just gotta, you can't be cocky about it. Number eight. So for next for me, as I got Samuel Smith from Deep Madness, I really think what you did on the base, the extra little bits, and swapping off to that base from Game Envy was pretty amazing. I like the rust effects you did, I like the little battery that you added to it, and I think overall the paint job, you really nailed a lot of the folds on his fabric. I um, I love that model as well, it was nearly in my list, it could have been an honourable mention later on. I agree, the Game Envy bases just add so much to miniatures if you've got the time to remove them, and these were prototype slash resin miniatures, so I didn't need to remove them, I just needed to glue them down. For my number eight, it is the Commander Geitz, I think you pronounce it, from Fire Team Zero. And this was just a, it was quite a large model. It was a Patreon uh, pick by Steven. And I just liked all the weathering. I went maybe a bit OTT on the weathering, but it was one of the first weathering, probably one of the only weatherings I've ever done. And I added loads and loads of rust and made that machine look like it had been destroyed by weathering basically and I, I thought I was I was very very pleased with the end result of that one myself. Seven. For this one you've already mentioned it Austin this I am picking the Fawn Spawn Prime I really really liked how quick this model was really really quick easy job really and then I spent a lot of time on the OSL it was my first time doing OSL in anger I think it's a nice video on the channel to show everyone how to go about OSL in quite an easy manner really so that's my number seven. Well, for me, I got to say that, you know, you are right. It's It was a really great paint job. For my number seven, I'm going to have to go with Krumpus from the War in Christmas Village. Uh, I just loved using the Citadel snow effect. It was the first time I've ever used it. And I like the stickiness. Even after it dried, it kind of looked like it was still wet. 
I liked how you you sort of scraped it or splashed it up the up the model itself. So not only was it on the base, but it was actually up Crumpus, and it just looked really, really realistic. Yeah, I just wanted to make him look like he was traveling, you know, traveling through the snow, kind of dredging himself through. It's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, I, I think you completely nailed it. So you got that effect, bish bash bosh done. Number six. So for my number six, it's going to have to be the soldier from Nemesis. And what I liked most about it, I mean, I like the overall paint job, don't get me wrong, but my favorite thing about it was the visor. It really, you, you just kind of knocked it out of the park when it came to the reflectiveness of that visor. So this is going to be pretty awkward because that's exactly, the first of all, the model that I picked and the, the reasons that I picked. I thought I went for really, really subtle, really careful with the shade. And mm -hmm. so, so I think I got the highlights and the shading really subtly, but then the main reason was just the visor. That's my first time painting glass. And I think the random technique I painted, it was actually Benson that suggested that technique to me. And I think it just came out looking like glass, exactly what I was going for. It really, so, it really did. It really did, yeah. man. Funny, we both picked it for six. So, I know, it's crazy, man. It's, it's like we know each other yeah, or something. Yeah, it's like we've no. got the same opinion. We've been we'll, doing we'll, this we'll together see. for too this, long. <laughs> this might be the one and only model that we both pick. Let's see how we get on <laughs> going forward. Probably. Number five. So for this one, number five, it's it's one of Benson's models. I'm going to pick the Massive Darkness Werebear. And the reason for picking this is I think it was, first of all, probably actually one of Benson's best painted models on the channel. Secondly, I just really, really liked his dry brushing on this. And the contrast with the the sort of uh, his, his, his robes, I think, I don't know how else to describe it, that bright blue against the brown. I think there were two colors that went really, really, really well together. I know it was in the artwork, but Benson painted it really well, and I just loved the dry brushing on that model. He did an amazing job uh, dry brushing it. And that's also, you guys didn't use a whole lot of wash in that either. He kind of went from a dark color to a light color when it came to the robes, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's yeah. how I recall it. Great work, Benson. Absolutely. Uh, for me, uh, my number five is Hellboy. Uh, I got to say, what you did on his coat, the all the highlighting, the subtle highlighting on his coat, and the red work you did on his skin, probably top notch. Probably some of the best work I've seen you do in a long time. He almost was on my list. He's not on my list, but I was just I really really liked his brown coat and then the red. I've, that was one of the, my criteria for picking a model. I nearly picked a model just because it was red. So he nearly, he was on my short list. He, it's one of the best use of uh, khaki for me, I got to say. Khaki. <laughs> khaki. Do you mean khaki? Khaki. khaki. <laughs> it's, a whole new, it's a whole new color. <laughs> Let's see what's coming up next. Number four. So for my number four, I had to choose one of my favorite paint jobs of the year was the Orc Walkers from Zombicide Green Horde. For two things. One, for the blood work that I did on them. I really tried to like emphasize how gory these monsters were. And the fact that I painted all five models so people could see the individual skulls. I was, was going to say exactly that. Although you didn't batch paint and didn't show us the process at the end of the I day. I did not, no. You, you did do them all and they were all on the spin at the end. So we got to look at that. And I love the color, the tone you picked. It's uh, sticking to the artwork, I know, but you you matched it pretty darn well. And I was I was impressed with your work on that one. Quite cartoony, like... I like your style often. Is, that is my style. Like I like to do the cartoony highlights. Yeah, but it's a good model. Good choice. Good choice. Um, I didn't pick, I don't think I picked anything on my list from the from the core set. Um, the, I thought we painted them all really well. There was yourself, myself, and Benson covered the core set. I thought they were all really nice. So, but my number four is Zombicide Green Horde which is displayed right next to me. Uh, mine is from the, the Horde box. It's one of the Kickstarter extras, and it's Gannicus, um, Muhammad Ali. And the reason I've picked this as my number four is it's got the really dark skin tone, which is something we don't mm -hmm. paint very often. It's quite difficult to showcase, and I think he worked out really well. But on top of that, and another thing that we don't see very often, is colored meta metals, metallics, and he's got that sort mm, of yeah. red. Red metallic's really hard to paint, so it came out a bit more pinky, but... Is a nice showcase of Vallejo's metal medium as well. So that's my number four. That's it's a great model. It really is, man. I, I did, it, once you painted it, it made me want to paint it even more. And it made me want to use metal medium, which you've used previously in some other uh, videos, just to get different colors with those metallics. Nice, nice. Hopefully you'll get some metal medium in the future. Indeed. Number three. 
So for my number three, it's a guest appearance. It's by Heroes and Bosses who did paint for the channel and he sometimes paints for the channel. It's Mike and he came to the channel and he painted the Bloodseeker Minotaur, 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 Minotaur. We say Minotaur, you can say whatever you like. I will not hold it. Potato, potato, you know. (laughs) And uh, it's a bull with horns with (laughs) feet. Exactly. And so he painted that from Massive Darkness. And I think it was a really, really good showcasing. And Mike's just a fantastic painter, full stop. But he did that Xenophil priming. Do you remember that? Where he's got the black primer and the white mm-hmm. primer, and then he just highlight, used that to highlight the colors and how to pick which colors he did it. And it was a big enough miniature to sort of blend those colors together. And I, it's a must see. If you've not seen that one, check that out for some Xenophil priming and building up from that base primer. I do agree. It's one of my favorite paint jobs are his guest appearances on Watch You Paint It. For my number three, it was lower on your list. It's higher on mine. It's the Fire Team Zero Commander Grits. I love the weathering and the rust effect you did on this. Like, I really think you knocked it out of the park. It's not pronounced Geitz. It's the first time. Oh, it's just a Geitz. Geitz? Yeah, I think you yeah, should. Yeah, you know what? You, you know, whatever. Potato, <laughs> potato. Well, you can't pronounce <laughs> I, I'm going to enjoy the comments where somebody just Minotaur. Minotaur. Us both be like, you guys cannot speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We've, it's a long day, and we're doing what we can to share this with the world. But, again... I really like the rust effect. I thought you really did a nice job. I don't think you overdid it. I think it was absolutely perfect for what we were, what you were trying to achieve. That's, busy, that's perhaps the difference in the uh, in the order. Then I just felt like it was slightly overdone. And if you didn't, and you know, it's all uh, what's that word? Yeah, perspective, yeah, perspective, and subjective, right? Everything's Perse- subjective. Yeah, yeah so subjective. We all see yeah, these yeah. things differently, and what one of us loves, another dislikes. And it's hard to love your own work a lot of the time. So I'm always, I often comment on a video, mm. you know, I really, really like this one. And it's not showing off so much as being surprised that I love my own work for once, that sort of thing. Number two. So for my number two, it's it's got to be the great Zanzibar. Just because I love Freddie Mercury so much in Queen, and I really liked what you did with his mustache. I know it's a simple thing, but that power stash that I like to call it, it was pretty phenomenal when it comes to his face. And just his the work you did on his clothing. Like, you really kind of nailed the artwork. And it didn't, it wasn't muddled. I thought when you were going to use washes, it was going to kind of muddle it down a little bit, but it really stands out quite well. And this is the the second one on the list that Stephen from Patreon actually has picked. So he's phenomenally good at picking fantastic models for us to paint now my number two is your clovis from the from zombicide's ultimate survivor now i haven't actually got a specific reason that i love that model i just think it's really really well painted and not even arguably i think it is your single best painted miniature on the channel so if anybody's not seen that one they should check out that and all the links to all of these models will be in the description below if you've not seen any of them they'll be all down there so great work austin and that's my favorite of yours for the year i'll flatter will get you everywhere you <laughs> tip my hat by all means thank you very much sir and the granddaddy of them all number one. Oh. It's me to do number one. I lost track of who was counting each one in. It's difficult when we're not in the same room, but for me, it is the Deep Madness figure. It's the engineer that I painted, and I think this was just a really solid, almost competition-like showcase of a model. So overall, it's just one of my favorite models that that I've personally painted, and that's probably why it's going to be at number one. As I just mentioned, it's not often you love your own work. You've always got flaws in it, and I Mm -hmm. think the engineer just came out really, really well. I spent a long time on it, subtle highlights, subtle shadows, and I just painted his eyes really well, probably the most accurate eyes I've painted to date. So that's my number one, guys. I got to say, you're absolutely right. The, the, The face and the eyes were the most accurate, and in that same vein, from my number one, it's Clovis for that same particular reason. I think it's one of my better or if not best paint jobs I've ever done. But I loved how well I did his eyes. Like that's really what stood out to me in this paint job. His eyes were really, really good. You're not right there, but it was definitely the second best video on the channel. Second best. In- oh, I, I, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Did you agree with us? What are your top 10 miniatures from the channel this year? Let us know in the comments below. If you agreed with any of these comments or positions, or if you think any of us were wrong, let us know anything you like. Hopefully you've had a very, very nice holiday, etc., etc. And we'll see you in the new year. 
See you later, guys. Happy gaming. Bear with me. I forgot. Damn it, Austin, you had nothing more to say? Whew.